evening and welcome to another episode of Porch Talk. And this evening I have as my co-host uh, Roger Urban. Uh, Ed is busy tonight and for our guests we have Wendy Penner of the Northern Berkshire Community Coalition and Joyce Brewer of Berkshire AHEC. Personally I think is much better pronounced Berkshire OHEC. <laughs> Not that anyone actually listens to me, of course. Okay. <laughs> That's true. The, uh, the correct response to that is, I'm sorry, were you saying something? Oh, I'm sorry, were you saying something? Oh, I'm sorry, were you saying something? <laughs> <laughs> we could keep this up for the whole That's hour. Right. <laughs> this is not the Monty Python show. <laughs> yes. So, uh, before we get going with our guests and our co-host, I want to call your attention to the photo behind us. And Eric, would you please put that in front of us? Thank you, Eric. Now, this photo was taken in 1936 at a particular railroad crossing. And the question of the hour is, what railroad uh, crossing was this photo taken at? Yes, I realize there's a, wa a lot of water there, there was a flood in 1936, as this photo demonstrates. But what railroad crossing are we looking at here? So Eric, if you'd put that behind us again, please. Thank you. And if you know the answer, or you think you know the answer, or just have a wild guess, please give us a call at 664-4408. Ah, there we are, right on the monitor, right on the screen. <clears throat> So, <clears throat> Wendy, I believe you have to leave early. That would sound a lot more sincere if you weren't laughing hysterically. <laughs> oh gosh, I'm so sorry! <laughs> <clears throat> so, uh, you are going to be talking uh, about alcohol. Yes, yes. I, am I going to be talking about it now? You certainly are. <laughs> okay. As much as you want, my Great. dear. Great. Well, I... Don't let anyone call you that during the hunting season. <laughs> well, I am thrilled to be here. Thank you so much for the opportunity to You're speak welcome. about this. And um, the reason um, that I'm excited to be talking about alcohol is because uh, we recently addressed it at a Northern Berkshire Community Coalition forum. And what was different was we were actually talking about alcohol and vaping as kind of the hidden crises. Because often when you talk about substances that are misused, people focus a lot on the opioid epidemic, understandably so. Um, mm -hmm. It certainly caused a lot of devastation in our community. Um, my job at the coalition, where I work on our prevention and recovery uh, programs, uh, is very much focused on preventing youth substance use. That's a big part of it. And alcohol is a big focus. Um, but what I often don't get to, the opportunity to talk about is alcohol prevention is important because it's actually, it's misuse in our society. Um, mm -hmm. And the addiction to alcohol in our society is a very pervasive problem. And it's something that I really feel doesn't get enough attention. So uh, that's why I thought it was really important that we created space at a community mm -hmm. forum to talk about it. And um, I'm happy to share some of the specifics. Oh, yes, please share away. <laughs> well, um, one of the things that we did at the forum that I thought was really helpful is we actually showed what does a single serving of alcohol look like so that people understand mm. what a serving size is because we pretty much know what a beer looks like um, but not what the actual alcohol content um, mm -hmm. should be um, also what a, what does a, is a glass of wine a glass of wine is actually only five ounces so if you think about a measuring cup and what half of that looks like just a little bit more um, that would be oh yes we you have, have a, call. a phone call Good evening and welcome to Porch Talk. Hi, Paul. Hi, guest. Hello. Hi. Hi. I'm going to take a guess, Paul, Chris. All right. Guess away. Is that on Cook Street in Adams, somewhere around there, where it was a drain? And no, it is Columbia not. Columbia Street? Mm -hmm. No, ma'am. This is in North Adams. That voice. Oh, okay. That voice sounds awfully familiar. It's Chris. I didn't get it this week either, Paul. Well, uh, we still have uh, the better part of an hour, so. Alrighty. Feel free to call back. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. All right. I'm sorry to interrupt. No, that's you there. okay. That's okay. Uh, that um, it is. Uh, 
uh, five ounces of wine, um, mm -hmm. and again, depending on the alcohol content, and one and a half ounces of spirits, again, depending on you know, how many proof that is. And then, um, you know, a lot of times when we pour ourselves a glass of wine, it might be a lot closer to two servings than to one mm -hmm. serving. So what we talked about at the forum is what does low risk drinking look like? And that's actually different for men and for women um, because the way we metabolize alcohol, men can actually consume more alcohol and be considered still low risk um, than women. And in order to truly be a low risk drinker, you have to stay both below the daily limits for servings of alcohol and the weekly limits of servings mm -hmm. of alcohol. And uh, so for women, in order to be a low risk drinker, you should have no more than um, Sorry, I'm just going to consult my notes so I get this right. No more than three drinks on any given day and no more than seven drinks a week. So, um, you know, so if you're used to having one or two glasses of wine every night uh, or every day when you come home, you're already over um, mm -hmm. the, the safe weekly limits, you know, for how much alcohol you should be consuming. Um, so it's very easy to um, go over these safe limits. And of course, if you're above both the daily minimum and the weekly minimum, you know, you have more than three drinks um, in any given day and more than seven drinks a, a week, then that's really the highest risk drinking. And then for men, those limits are no more than four servings of alcohol on mm -hmm. any given day and no more than 14 drinks a week. And we also talked about the, what are the health effects if you are doing that higher risk drinking, because people might be like, what do you mean it's legal? I'm making it to work every day. I feel okay in the morning. Why shouldn't I have three or four drinks a night if it helps me relax and feel good, if it's not impacting my lifestyle? Well, it turns out that the impact on your health of chronic use is actually devastating. Um, and that the number of deaths related to alcohol misuse actually far out uh, exceeds those um, from opiate misuse mm -hmm. uh, and addiction. Well, I'm going to put you on the spot here. <clears throat> uh, th and this thought just occurred to me tonight. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at my drink here. Now, this is, just so you know, it's green tea with a fruit juice cocktail in it. Okay. But let's say that it's filled up to the up to here with beer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How much of that is going to be alcohol and how much is just going to be carbs? Oh, well, um, that's a good question. Just uh, um, roughly. Well, if, if you have 5% um, alcohol, then I assume that means that 5% of your beverage. Mm -hmm. So now with some of the craft beers we're seeing, you know, 10% or more alcohol, but traditionally beer was 5% alcohol. Uh -huh. So as far as where the carbs are, uh, alcohol versus non-alcohol and how you divide it up, I'm not a nutritionist, but I can tell you that 5% alcohol is um, considered like the most average, you know, uh -huh. kind of thing for beer in terms of content. And if it was wine? Uh, how many, like how many serving sizes? Is that what you're asking? Or how much, what would be the percent? If of... that was full of wine, mm -hmm. and I don't mean this kind of wine. <laughs> I don't get enough wine. Well, 12% wine, um, I guess an average, based on this publication that I'm looking mm -hmm. at from the National Institute of Alcoholism and Alcohol Abuse, says that wine, um, an average wine might be 12% alcohol. And then if it was vodka, <laughs> your average spirits. 100%. <laughs> well, it depends. But, you know, a lot of spirits are 40% alcohol. But, mm -hmm. of course, you can get your 80 proof or 100 proof or whatever grain alcohol. I think I haven't even enjoyed getting to look like this. <laughs> and the other thing that we talked about is how um, if you look at the number of people receiving treatment for substance use disorder, um, through the health system, residential treatment, detox mm -hmm. services, detoxification services, or CSS, um, you know, the step down, the clinical uh, residential services, that actually uh, about almost 70% are receiving treatment for alcohol, and that most of the rest of that is opioids. Wow. So it's actually, you know, almost twice as much who are receiving treatment um, for alcohol addiction. And a detoxing from alcohol is actually um, can kill you. I mean, that is not true for opioids. I mean, it can, 
it can kill you because of complications that it might cause, like dehydration and things like that. But actually detoxing from alcohol for some people could be deadly uh, if they didn't do it without medical assistance. Mm -hmm. so, um, so that's important for folks to know, too. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I'm just full of good news tonight. Yes, you are. <laughs> Uh, unlike me, who's full of something else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we won't dwell on that. <laughs> Roger, do you have anything to add to this discussion? No. <laughs> well, one of the things, the, the conversation. No, the, numbers, the numbers are shocking, really, when yeah. you look at that. Well, the conversation we really wanted to get to that we didn't have time to get to is like, why is alcohol so widely misused in our society and in our community? Because, um, you know, it's as with tobacco. Um, alcohol use levels are very high in North Adams, both by youth um, and adults, and, and binge drinking in particular, which we didn't even talk about, which is having you know five or more um, drinks in a two-hour period. Do you think that's um, relative another high to risk uh, income? I don't know. No, I think I think like many addictions. Um, I mean, there may be some disproportion around you know income level, but um, one of the we had an EMT. Um, Stephen Murray at the uh, forum, and one of the comments he made during our discussion was that you know he's been in homes of uh, some of the most you know rich and powerful members of our Northern Berkshire community responding to alcohol-related calls. Um, so I think it, as with m many addictions, it crosses many boundaries um, around class. I mean, the, uh, the misconception for a lot of people is, you know, people are down and out, and so they're going to take care of their woes with drink. Right, right. So right. it's obviously not true. Well, I think we have to remember everyone has woes, you know? Yeah. I mean, people are carrying a lot of stuff around. Um, sometimes life can be very hard regardless of your economic mm -hmm. um, level, and people do use alcohol to blunt, you know, things that make them feel bad to not feel them. Um, so that definitely does get to some of those root causes. Right. Well, I get the impression that um, most binge drinking occurs in high school and college. Because mm -hmm. in high school, you're experimenting with it. And uh, in college, you're suddenly free to do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. Well. And since you know, it's legal, it can't, be, it can't hurt you. Right, right. Well, there is a lot of binge drinking. Um, on college campuses. I thought they had some data about binge drinking in here, but um, I don't about the level of binge drinking by adults. I can tell you binge drinking by young people is a very serious problem. It's especially mm -hmm. serious because your brain is not done developing until your um, mid-20s. So marinating my brain in alcohol, if I decide to go out and have four or five drinks mm -hmm. in a night, is very different from a 18 year old or a 21 year old or even a 24, 25 year old doing that. Um, and it is why uh, in the prevention world, we talk about how early use um, is a risk factor for addiction because exposing your brain to mm -hmm. chemicals when you're young um, has been clearly demonstrated to increase your risk for addiction when your brain's all done growing, you know. Um, um, uh, how much it's, it's of this information story. is being disseminated at the school level? Well, um, that's a good question. We try to focus our prevention efforts in the school beginning um, actually in elementary school and focusing on not giving a lot of detail, um, mm -hmm. but just focusing on, you know, here's why kids shouldn't be using substances be, and then giving them the socio emotional skills the, um, to, to understand that and to do things like to refuse, to have ways to feel good about themselves when they're feeling anxious uh, mm -hmm. or having, uh, addressing bullying or things like that. Um, so those so socio-emotional skills as a buffer to not turning to substances um, and giving them alternatives around ways to have fun and saying actually, you know, this isn't a good choice. Um, as a way to have fun mm -hmm. because of the risks. Um, but by the time kids are in junior high or high school, we do like to start giving them a little bit more information about the details yeah. of the impacts of use. But I think it really varies depending on the school system. Um, and really, this is a conversation we encourage um, parents to have with their kids. And I think we might have a call. Oh, <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah, we do have a call. 
Hello, and welcome to Porch Talk. Hi, Paul. Hi, Jeff. Hello. Oh, it's Chris again. I'm going to take one more chance. All right, go ahead. Okay, is that down where Columbus Ave is, where State Road is? Uh, actually, I'm going to give that to you because that is, no, it's not State Road. No. So I'm not going to give that to you. So However, I'm Columbus Ave or where no, 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 no. But stop? but you're close because the word state does feature into it. Do you want to take one more guess? <laughs> We're yeah, rooting I'm for you. Um, We're rooting for you. Is that, where the, is that where the goodwill would be? It's around that area. I, I, no. Uh, I know what, what, uh, Chris, tell me, what street is goodwill on? <laughs> it's state? No. No. <laughs> it's state? What street well, is street. it on? State Street, but there's a little Columbia Street off it. No, no. But yeah, yeah. Now you're 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 you are so close to this. You're gonna kick yourself if you hang up without guessing it correctly. <laughs> and if you don't kick yourself, I'll come over there and kick you for you. Okay, because you're one street away. Yeah, I know. All right. So does what? So no. What street? S T R E E T. What street that starts with the word state is Goodwill on? State Street. Yes, very good. I thought I said that before. No, you said State Road. Oh. <laughs> yes, this is in fact Yay. the State Street Railroad Crossing. Alrighty. Yeah, so that uh, that uh, railroad trestle is still there down near the um, American Legion. Right, right. And that bridge you see going across, uh, which is over here, <laughs> can't reach it. Roger could reach it. Yeah, uh, a little more toward your head. That's the one. That is where State Street crossed the river, <laughs> and then the railroad track crossed that. Yeah. Well, tell Ed I finally figured it out once. <laughs> thank <laughs> heaven. I will certainly pass that along to him. All right. Take so, care. So, thank you for calling, Chris. Okay. Bye -bye. Have a great night. Bye-bye. Actually, I should tell her to have a great week, uh, a great month, because that makes her, that gives her the bragging rights. Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> How often do you do the show? Hmm? How often do you do the show? Twice a month. Okay. So for the next three weeks, she has breaking rights. Awesome. All right, so now that we're guaranteed of no more phone calls, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you still have about 12 minutes. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, um... I don't know, can you think of anything else, Joyce? Like you were there at the forum, um, the stuff that I, I, I think I think the thing that I would encourage people to know is that at the coalition you could act or you could go online, you can actually get a copy of this book, Rethinking Drinking. Uh -huh. And if you or someone you know might be wondering, um, am I drinking too much? Is my loved one drinking too much? There's a lot of great information in there. And not only does it give you some like overall data about just how pervasive the problem of alcohol misuse is, um, but it shows you what the different serving sizes are, what low risk drinking is, and then if you're, it talks about what the health consequences of long term use are, including alcohol is carcinogenic. You know, it is shown to uh, be a contributing cause to many different kinds of cancers. And I just think it's so interesting that, you know, we have the stigma now on tobacco use. Um, we have this stigma now on, oh, don't eat that food, you know, oh, that, could cause, that can contribute to cancer if you eat too much of this or that. But yet, we, want, we encourage people to drink alcohol all the time. 
Mm -hmm. We say, oh, have fun, have a drink, you know, have another one. And we feel like that's a positive thing. And, you know, to re be rethinking drinking, I think, is a really great message. And when we were talking about this forum at the coalition, one of our staff talked about how he and some of his friends um, did Sober October. And they just supported each other to say, hey, let's just like kind of do this together and be um, alcohol free for a month. And about just like how much better they felt. Because, you know, some people never drink. Some people are pretty strict about only drinking socially on the weekends, but many people kind of drink daily and they just feel like that's a normal, healthy thing, and it really isn't. So, you know, you, you can make a change. And so this book has some really cool tools to help you just maybe set a goal, monitor your progress, get support, mm -hmm. um, things like that. Yeah, great. So please tell us again how to get that book if you want, if you want a copy. Absolutely. So if you go, um, first of all, come see me at the Northern Berkshire Community Coalition or email me and I can email you and an electronic version. And you're in your version. office pretty much 24 7 <laughs> <laughs> I am there many days of the week, but you can call me um, at 663-7588 or email me at wpenner at nbccoalition.org. But you can also just go online any time of the day or night and you can Google the National Institute of Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism. It's part of the National Institute of Health. And um, you can look for their publications mm -hmm. and you can find uh, this publication, Rethinking Drinking. You can order your own free copy there or download a PDF of it um, electronically. Or as I said, we have copies in the office. And, mm -hmm. You know, the other thing is, is um, if people are wondering about this, you know, talk to your doctor because there are medications um, and other resources to support you if you're um, if you need some help um, cutting down. And you know, maybe maybe you need to be assessed if you have a dependency and if you require some treatment. Well, I know I for one cannot cut down on my alcohol consumption just because I don't drink any now. <laughs> well, there you go. And I, I was, uh, one of the things I thought was really interesting in this is Not a Not for lack of trying. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't agree with you. No, I just never acquired the taste for it. Right, right. Well, that's not a bad thing. And do you feel, do you feel like you're in social situations often where people are kind of pressuring you or encouraging you? Not since you I was to... in high school. Right, right, right. Uh, I remember, well, I was in uh, chorus and we went on an exchange trip, and we were at some party, and I had a, a bottle of soda, was pretending to be drunk out of my mind. <laughs> and uh, a guy came along, hey, I've got something for you. Filled it up with beer, and I just quietly poured it out on the yeah, ground. Yeah, well, good for you, good for you. And well, that, you know, when you bring up another issue, for people in the recovery community, the pervasive use of alcohol and expectation that it should be available at every social event um, can be problematic. And so that's another reason to just be considerate when you're hosting events or attending social events to not assume that everyone wants alcohol, to make sure there are non-alcoholic options. Um, mm -hmm. And to be sensitive that if someone says they don't want to drink, don't challenge them. Don't say, why? Why don't you want to drink alcohol? You know, that's uh, say, okay, you know, no problem. Here's the other options. Mm -hmm. And um, be respectful in that way, you know. A couple of years ago, I was going to indulge in my very first beer. Uh, it was for my 45th class reunion. Mm -hmm. And wouldn't you know it, just before the reunion, I started a new medication, no alcohol. <laughs> Oh. So I never got my first beer. Oh, well, you know, maybe one day when you decide having one, you're going to be like, I'm glad I waited because this yeah. was a big disappointment. <laughs> yeah, I, I expect it will be disappointing. You know, for one thing, there's a taste of the alcohol. And what else do you taste with beer? Uh, essentially, it's, it's like liquid bread. <laughs> I don't know how to describe the flavor yeah. of beer. Does, does that sound it depends on the beer. Rather? There's so many no. <laughs> liquid bread. No. I mean, okay. some beers taste different than other beers, depending on the alcohol content, but mostly depending on where they're brewed and what kind of uh, ingredients they use. For example, if you got beer in, in uh, England, they drink a lot of what they call stout. And that's pretty strong stuff, okay? You go across the channel into France, you won't find too much beer. You'll find wine. 
You go up through Germany, you're going to find beer. And when they have an Oktoberfest, a lady comes around with a stein about that tall. <laughs> yeah, it's got to hold a quart. Yeah, at oh, least. More, yeah. At least. <laughs> and with, the, with all the smaller craft breweries now, too, people are doing all kinds of creative yes. things with, yes. you know, including fruit in their beers or all kinds of creative ingredients. So flavors can vary vastly. Um, I mean, I mean, I do drink socially, so I'm not trying to, like, uh, cast a stigma on no one should use alcohol or anything, you know, just same with when you talk about minimizing and healthy use of any substance. Sometimes people are like, oh, you're a stick in the mud. It's like, no, this is just about, you know, moderation exactly. and health. And <laughs> I think if you think that anything you ingest can kill you, given the right amount, okay? That's a good point. If you uh, indulge in spaghetti <laughs> and, and drink, you know, drink eat a pound of it a day, it's going to kill you over, over a Even water. Time. Even water sure, can, uh, exactly. can do exactly. that. So. so I think anything in, in moderation, and the big thing is, you know, set your own limit. Yeah. And a limit shouldn't be just one drink shy of being drunk. Yeah. And I think a lot crosses over between tobacco and, and alcohol yep. because um, youth will tend to either smoke or vape uh, with flavors. And there's a, there are a ton of flavors. When I was growing up, without giving away my age, vodka was vodka. Now it's whipped cream vodka, it's pineapple vodka, yep. it's whatever. Yep. So I think that- Marshmallow. Marshmallow, yeah. So I think that, that um, it's another way to, in, to entice our youth is through the flavored products that are out there that are very sugary, very sweet, taste like other things, just like um, vape products have a, a fruity flavor. That's yeah, a heck of a, a good segue, segue, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Let, while we have Wendy here for the next couple minutes, uh, how can we transition this to the vaping issue? Well, the flavors is a is a I great a, a great exactly. uh, uh, yeah. point, um, Joyce, for mm -hmm. sure. Because um, I think with flavored alcohol and even like how we see now alcohol flavored ice creams and alcohol flavored everything, it's just sent, sent that signal to kids that alcohol is you know fun and that alcohol is yummy and you know and that's what we see with the use of flavors okay. around flavor. the vaping absolutely and i think another thing is that um i there to, with alcohol use and especially with like cigarette use or vaping use a lot of them a lot of time they cross because um people will go out and they'll have a drink and they'll smoke a cigarette i mean how many times have we seen in our lives um individuals in movies and things, and they have the cigarette in one hand and they have the beer or the martini in another. So there's, there's like almost a social component to right. both of these. Um, so they do kind of fit together. Yeah, that's a good point. <clears throat> yeah. Yes. All right, well, Wendy, it's almost time for you to go. So before you do, what is the date of the upcoming coalition meeting? Um, uh, rather the forum. Oh my goodness, uh, I cannot think of the date, but I can tell you it is the second Friday in December and it is going to be held this time at First Congregational Church in Williamstown mm -hmm. at our regular time, 10 a.m. to noon. Um, I think it might be the 14th, um, but well, 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 <laughs> the <laughs> second Friday in December and we're going to be talking about <clears throat> mental health. So um, it's a great follow-up to this because a lot of times people are using uh, these. I couldn't help but room. notice the way you were looking at me when you said mental health. <laughs> I was You're thinking so about you. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I just thank you so much, and I'm sorry I have to run, but I really appreciate. Well, don't run. I'll, I'll thank you for coming. I'll walk. <laughs> I beat him to it. He was going to tell you that. You know, like, <laughs> I have to run. Yeah. I wish I could this away. Uh, well, just annoyed. let it go right down to the ground. Oh. Eric is turned it off. You have a wonderful night. Thank, Thank you. you for coming. See ya. So Joyce, yes. the floor is yours. But Yikes. before we give you the floor, I'm going to make a couple of announcements. Uh -oh. Okay. The first one of which is to remind you, uh, mark your calendar the second Friday in December. Uh, for the Coalition Forum, uh, which will be uh, from 10 a.m. to noon at the First Congregational Church in Williamstown. And as I say on practically every show, if you have never been to a Coalition Forum, you're only cheating yourself. You, at some point in your life, 
you have to come to a coalition forum. Because once you see what the forums are like, you're going to want to keep going to them. They are <coughs> that important. They are that um, helpful to the community. They are an awesome place to network and to see all the hard work that's oh, going yeah. on. Absolutely. Uh, one in particular that sticks in my mind was, <coughs> excuse me, when Al Bashan, I'm sorry, Al Bashevkin was uh, director of the coalition. Uh, we were doing introductions and a woman announced, well, in panic, announced that she's homeless. And uh, she was told to go to the Northern Berkshire Community Coalition. And even before she was done talking, essentially people were coming out of the woodwork, talk to me at the break. Everyone from uh, the Department of Children and Families to um, uh, the Lewison House and everyone in between, come and talk to me at the break and we'll help you, we'll give you directions to go in and mm -hmm. so on. And that, that was really amazing to see. And things like that can happen a lot more often. Uh, but you have to come to the coalition meeting to see them because most of the people that go are people that are in public service organizations. And they are all looking for ways to expand their clientele, you know, which they can do by connecting with other organizations and with members of the community like you. So please give serious consideration to going to the coalition forum in December. However, before December comes, uh, comes Thanksgiving. And we here at NBCTC are going to be holding our annual Thanksgiving dreadful a thon uh, for, oh, I would say at least 10 years or more. We have been do having a dreadful a thon every Christmas, I'm sorry, every Thanksgiving, uh, starting at 6 p.m. on Thanksgiving Day and going at least until 6 a.m. the following uh, day, which is Friday. Uh, we have a marathon of Penny Dreadful's Shilling Shockers huh? uh, that used to be produced in, um, in uh, oh, dry. where did I say it was done? Beats Me. Yes, in be it used to be done in Beats Me. Uh, so it's North, but, meet, North Beats Me. Yes, yeah. thank you. Uh, but at any rate, uh, Penny Dreadful is a a witch who's a couple hundred year old, years old. She's married to a werewolf named Guru, and uh, they have a sidekick okay. uh, called Manfred von Bulo, who is a vampire hunter. And uh, there's uh, another character who is completely out of her mind. <laughs> and they talk about movies, and uh, they show off things they've gotten from viewers and so on. And, uh, it, it's, uh, and it's some of the worst monster movies you have ever seen in your life. And if you've never watched the show, there are probably some you've never seen. <laughs> so please tune in here on uh, channel 1303 on Thanksgiving Day at 6 p.m. for our dreadful a -thon. So now that we're all dreadful here, Let's talk about that dreadful problem, vaping. Right. Um, just to give a little bit of background, because um, I have a lot of people when I start talking about this ask me, well, why did you get into something like this? Um, I came from a family of smokers. Um, my grandfather passed away of cancer of the esophagus. My father died of a heart attack. And my brother and sister um, are both lifelong smokers who are both very ill right now. And when I got pregnant with my son, I thought, well, maybe this is a good time to start looking at not smoking anymore. Um, and it was tough. It's one of the toughest things that you'll ever do is to, is to quit. Um, and I think that there's a lot of stigma attached mm -hmm. as far as quitting because people look at themselves as being a failure if they try 
and they're not successful on the first try. Mm -hmm. And we all know that you know the average person can take anywhere from seven to eleven times. Not everybody is like me, um, who just gets pregnant and says, "Well, I can't do this because you know I'm carrying a life and and yada yada." So I, I think, as I said at the the forum a couple of weeks ago, I think that we need to take the stigma away of people feeling that they're failures if they have to take more than one attempt to quit. Um, so that, I think that's an important message to get out mm -hmm. to people, that every time you try, you take something from the last time you started to try, so that you're learning new things as you go along. So I think that's fair. That's my, my um, kind of push on quitting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my father quit smoking. Uh, one of my brothers came along, I think it was Mark, and he said to himself, well, how can I tell him not to smoke when I smoke? Mm -hmm. So he quit cold turkey. Yeah, me too. Yeah, and uh, the, the, the bad part of this is he got it into his head that it's just that simple. You just stop. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, it's not easy. <laughs> not easy. It's damn near impossible. It's very difficult. I think the yeah. thing that people have to, we kind of have to move away from looking at it as a habit and looking at it as an addiction. And that's the difference mm -hmm. in that, mm -hmm. you know, people who smoke the nicotine, <clears throat> it does affect the, the chemicals in your brain. And so therefore we have to look at it as an addiction. And our Surgeon General um, at one point said, you know, it could be just as addictive as heroin. So I, I think that's what we have to get in people's mind, that um, nicotine is an addiction. Mm -hmm. um, so along comes vaping, which is what you, you invited me here to speak about today. And vaping really hasn't been in the United States all that long. I mean, the first, well, if you look back at the failures, but the ones that were successful um, was a, a, a scientist in China who developed an e-cigarette to help his father quit. That was the whole movement mm -hmm. behind vaping. And so eventually it made its way into the United States, um, and people have seen all sorts of different kinds of, of vaping things. They've seen the Juul and heard about the Juul, and there's tanks and mods and cigarettes. There's just a wealth of, of different devices. But they really haven't been hot and heavy in the market until probably about maybe 2009, 2010. And then in 2015, along came the Juul, which is kind of referred to as the iPhone of e-cigarettes. Um, it comes in one strength and one strength only. It comes in a lot of flavors. We talked about when Wendy was still here, we talked about flavors and how they're, they're a very integral part of why a youth may pick up using an e-cigarette. Mm -hmm. So. Juul now owns most of the market for e-cigarettes. Um, when they first came out, their advertising was uh, very hip. The girls were pretty and young. The guys were really handsome, and they were all having fun. And they had all these flavors like cucumber melon and fruit medley and, and just all sorts of different flavors that would attract kids. Um, and it wasn't until someone kind of looked at the situation and said, hey, um, all of a sudden, we're going from hardly any cigarette smokers. We had youth down to like around 6% or less smoking cigarettes. And now, um, there are new statistics that came out last week um, that said we have over 5.2 million youth in the United States who could potentially be addicted to e-cigarettes. And it's done through the flavors. Um, if you go on um, any vaping site that sells liquids, you can get raspberry, strawberry, ice cream, birthday cake, you can get cupcake, you can get Doritos. You can just get a wealth of, of flavors. That and initially, it was the, people thought, well, this is a good way to get off cigarettes. Right, they did. So you go from one evil to the second one. Right. Well, I can't. And if I'm not mistaken, it's all unregulated right now. It's unregulated. Absolutely. But we're, we're, we're moving ahead. Just don't know when the, the final things. But if you look at it, all the e-liquids are, are virtually unregulated. Um, and so you could have anything. You could have a cocktail of literally anything. And I think the important thing to remember is that because they're unregulated, um, you can't tell if you're getting a very light nicotine product or you're getting a heavy load of nicotine. Um, I have a friend who does this job in the Pioneer Valley, and she went into a vape shop, and she bought some liquid vape. And she said... She turned it over, and even though it said 0% nicotine, it had nicotine as the first ingredient. So there's really no quality control that's happening with these at this time. So um, I think everybody's on a lot of people's minds is Evali, which is uh, e-cigarette and vaping um, associated lung injury. 
I'm sure we've all seen that on TV. It's mm -hmm. been really yeah. publicized. Well, I went on to CDC uh, today. They come out with new um, data every Thursday. And to, as of today, there have been 2,172 cases across the United States. And we are now up to 42 deaths. So this is serious. And the CDC is saying that they might be leading in a direction of what might be causing this, but they're not going to come out and say that they've seen it in all cases. So it's a very serious problem right now in the United States as far as even our youth who are now addicted. Now, I realize our viewers are not going to see this, but I can see a color-coded map down at the bottom of the page. You can. Uh, what is that representing? It's representing um, where more cases have been reported in the mm -hmm. United States versus other states. As you can see, California has had a high amount. Texas has had a high amount. In Illinois has had a high amount of reported cases. Mm -hmm. Yes. In Massachusetts, we've had three related deaths. We've had a gentleman and two women. Um, and the two women reported that they had only vaped, that they hadn't used any THC products. Mm -hmm. So the CDC is saying they still don't know what's causing this. Well, of course, I know that a lot of people <coughs> would listen to that and say, well, okay, how many millions of people are there in the state who vape and there were only three deaths? That's not serious. Okay. What would you say to them? I would say that the FDA pulled all heads of lettuce off of shelves across the country for two deaths related to issues related to lettuce. So if, you, if you're talking about that, they pulled for just two people. We now have over 2,000 people in the United States who have come down ill with vaping-related injury. That's what I would say. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would much rather hear um, uh, statistics like that rather than saying, oh, only three people died in Massachusetts. It's not only. <laughs> That's what I would say yeah. first. It's not only. It's, it's three that um, are preventable, right? And so the CDC has some things that they, they, they have advice for us. They say that, um, well, I know personally, um, if, if youth are addicted or even an adult is, is a regular vapor and they stop, um, our concern is that they could go back to cigarette use because we have to go back to the fact that it's addictive. So um, we have to... Um, yeah, and if they're getting uh, a heavy charge of nicotine, then uh, they might just as well go back to cigarettes. Mm, Who knows? No. <laughs> well, I, I mean, you know, that uh, as long as they're addicted to the nicotine, and, well, I, I suppose I'm being stupid here. <laughs> it's not any better. Not Let's yeah, put it that yeah, way. It's I not any better to that. smoke uh, I, I'm just tobacco. trying to look at it from their perspective. Yeah, yeah, from their perspective, yeah, they might think, you know, when I stop vaping, I'm going to feel really crappy. Because we know that when you stop smoking at first, that, you know, you have to get the, all the different things out of your system, all the chemicals and stuff, and the nicotine. And, and people will report that they feel kind of crappy at first. Um, but I think that there's a lot of help out there nowadays. Um, mm -hmm. And there's a lot of solid advice. Um, like there's nicotine replacement therapy. There's um, Chantix. Some people it's good for, some people it's not, but it's still an option. And um, for the most part, we always recommend that people do counseling in connection with one of these nicotine replacement therapies because um, your chances of, of quitting are greater if you combine two different methods of, of quitting. But cigarettes have a lot of chemicals. They're also bad because um, you really are burning the product. So um, you have all the other carcinogens and, and so on and mm -hmm. so forth in them. So the CDC is really recommending that if you currently vape, um, that you seek treatment through your primary physician or you know um, a nicotine or a quit counselor mm -hmm. so that um, you don't have a tendency to want to go back to cigarettes. So uh, you said there are a lot of treatment options. How do we access them? Okay, well in Massachusetts right now, I recommend that if you're an adult, that you call 1-800-QUIT-NOW. You will receive counseling over the phone and um, 
you can receive um, so many weeks worth of nicotine replacement therapy, which would be your lozenges, your patches, and your gum. Mm -hmm. And just as an as a intersection here, I think it's important for people to understand that we're not recommending vaping for cessation anyway, because um, when you use patches and lozenges and gum, the big thing is you're stepping down. You start with a heavier dose of nicotine and then you slowly taper off. With the e-cigarettes, it's not quite so easy to do, especially if you're using a Juul, which only comes in one strain. Mm -hmm. So they're not approved by the FDA for use as a quit device anyway. Um, there's still too much we don't know about them. So we're encouraging people to talk to their physicians and, and get started on a, on a treatment plan and then call 1-800-QUIT-NOW um, mm -hmm. and, and get started on the quit journey. Yeah, um, I would like you to send me uh, information that you think would be good to put on our bulletin board. I can do that. Because uh, I can come up with PSAs for you. and uh, I think the, the, the one main anti-smoking ad that I have now is a picture of a guy who I quit on my 13th try. Yeah, you got Keep that trying. from me. Yeah, way to go. So if I could get more things like that, especially definitely. about vaping. Yes, definitely. Um, I can even um, try to get something on our youth campaign. Right now we're running two different campaigns. We're running a youth campaign. And um, this is, I don't know if you can see it, but this is what it looks like. Here, hold it up a little higher. OK, this there is what it go. looks like. This is on the Clearinghouse, the Massachusetts Clearinghouse, which has all sorts of fun facts on all different um, stuff for public health. But this is a uh, flyer that was created in conjunction and working with teens. And what it does is it gives teens information about vaping. Like, did you know that a jewel, the pod, is equal to a pack of cigarettes? Oh, wow. So a little itty bitty pod is equal to a pack of cigarettes. Now, keep in mind a pack of cigarettes in at North Adams is going for 10 bucks, nine bucks. A one pod, jewel pod, is probably slightly less than $4. And you're getting a cigarette Good pack grief. worth of nicotine. Um, so, you know, it's, it's really important that we work with youth. Um, and there's even a program just for them called mylifemyquit.com where they can go and they can sign up for counseling. And they can sign up for text messages or they can um, go online and, and mm -hmm. work through a program that they have online. Because we have to remember that since there's a vaping ban in place until at least the 24th of December, we have youth that would be ready to try to make the quit attempt. So they can use that or they can go to, this is quitting, they can text vape free mass and they can sign up for a program on that, which helps them with texts and, and daily words of encouragement in order to start their quit journey as well. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I asked um, Wendy, how is this being disseminated in the schools? And I wanna ask you the same thing. How is this hitting the schools, if at all? I'm in the schools as far as I work with principals and administrators. No, you're and, not. You're in a TV studio. Well, I am in a TV studio right now. Gosh. Go ahead and hit me. You know you want to. Um, but um, this, this material is free to schools. All they have to go to do is to go on the um, clearinghouse, and they can get the flyers. They can get posters. And also, I sit on a lot of different wellness committees in the schools, and I try to give this information out as much as possible. And I just made a presentation to the school nurses in Berkshire County last week. So I'm out and about spreading the word as much as possible. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, I'm not that strong. I've only been lifting weights. Yeah. <laughs> do you have a card by any chance? I do, in my purse. I okay. Yeah. Later on, I'd like to get one. Okay. Yes. Uh, so uh, while we are sitting here chatting, we have just under 10 minutes of show left. If you have a question for Joyce, or for Roger, or for me, or would just like to hear another voice than one of ours, please give us a call at 664-4408. Paul, I'd like to make a quick announcement, if I may. Feel free. Uh, on Saturday morning, starting at 9 a.m., we'll be picking up the veterans flags at Southview Cemetery. Everyone is welcome to join in. Last year we had about 60 people who uh, helped us uh, pick these flags up. Um, 
we have a lot of fun, and uh, I think uh, people get a lot out of it. Right now, we have a commitment from the Jury High School football team uh, and the Reads Across America ladies who will be coming down and, and giving us a hand. It's also good for kids to understand what, what these flags represent and what the whole thing is all about. So 9 o'clock, Southview Cemetery, and we'll be located on the road that's parallel to the skating rink. When I made the announcement at City Council, yeah. I said the bowling alley. No, it's the skating rink. And you'll see a crowd there. If you don't see a crowd, look for the red shirts. There'll be a few of us down there with red jackets or red sweatshirts or whatever. So we'd love to have your help. And uh, see you then. And that's tomorrow as we record this. Yes. So if you're watching this on Monday, you're too late. But if you're watching it tonight, you're not watching the same thing we're telling you about. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, other, than other than that. Other than that. Is there anything else you would like to say on this subject? Absolutely. I could talk on this subject for a very, very long time, but I'll try to keep Feel it Feel free. Okay. I think you have <laughs> just under eight minutes. Okay. I'll talk fast. I think the thing that people need to remember about vaping is it's not water, and it's not a vapor. It's an aerosol. And this thing is made, these, these products are made with chemicals. Um, and the CDC, which I encourage everyone to go on CDC website and look up the whole thing with um, this um, lung injury, and it's always updated every Thursday. But the thing is, is that these things are loaded with chemicals. And the point that I try to make with people is that um, they're made with like vegetable glycerin and propylene glycol, and um, they have benzoic acid, and they have this thing called diacetyl, which has been definitely link, linked to uh, what's called popcorn lung. And we all like popcorn, and we like popcorn with butter flavored. And I don't you... think I like the sound of that popcorn no. long. <laughs> no. If, if um, we've noticed now a few reports of deaths yes. due to vaping, but the thing I think they're missing telling people is what's killing them. Yes. I, I, they're, they're getting closer. They, they have announced, as of a couple of days ago, that there's vitamin E acetate that's mm -hmm. in a lot of the, of the lung samples that they're taking. And why that is so bad relates back to all the other chemicals I just told you about, in that none of those chemicals were meant to be inhaled. And I think that's the important um, message that I try to tell people. Because mm -hmm. are we exposed to vitamin E? We absolutely we take capsules. It's in lotion. Uh, propylene glycol is in um, pet friendly antifreeze. It's in a lot of other things to keep things from freezing. That will and kill you. And then vegetable glycerin is in a lot of bread products to keep them soft. But nowhere does it say that we should be inhaling these chemicals in our lungs. And regardless of the outcome of this, there are still plenty of concerns out there about the chemicals that people are inhaling when they really shouldn't be. So uh, at the risk of upsetting our viewer, <laughs> uh, Two. what exactly is popcorn lung? Popcorn lung is uh, diacetyl, is a, is a product that they throw on the popcorn before they bag it for microwaves because it gives you butter flavor. And what they noticed in popcorn factory workers is they were getting this lung condition. And they linked it back to the diacetyl, which is put into a lot of vaping liquids. Because again, if you're talking flavors for, for you to attract mm -hmm. you, um, you're talking things like cupcake flavors and birthday cake flavors and chocolate chip cookie flavors. And I know it's hard to believe they're all flavors, but they're flavors that they're selling out there. And that's what gives them that kind of buttery kind of flavor. So when they're mixing up these chemicals, um, they throw it into to certain flavors so you can get that. So it's it, it kind of like a glue. It's kind of, it's not necessarily a glue, it's more like a flavoring. You look at it as a flavoring because it's a buttery flavoring that they're mm -hmm. putting on or putting in these chemicals. But I well what I'm guessing is that it it makes the flavoring adhere to the food. I think it just gives it flavoring. Yeah. Yeah. So in the lungs it would function like a coating. It does. It does. The diacetyl yeah, functions as a coating, which gets into the smaller airways, which is exactly the vitamin E acetate. Um, it's, it's viscous. It's very thick. And the reason why they're using it in a lot of cases to, is to extend the, the liquid that's in there. 
Um, so they're noticing that it's coating the inside of the, again, the airways of your lungs. And with a lot of things you have to remember, your lungs being so fragile, um, they may not heal. Right. So you may be left with lifelong lung mm -hmm. um, injury and also things like an increase in bronchitis and, and asthma and things like that. And as Wendy alluded to um, when she was talking about alcohol, I think that a lot of people are using vaping products because if you talk to some youth, they'll tell you, well, I get a buzz when I, when I take a rip on my jewel. Um, and it makes me feel better. It makes me feel stronger. It makes me feel this. And um, that's not the case. We don't want our, our youth exposed to chemicals because their brains are still developing. You know, and I also talk to, to a lot of people and say, you know what, when I was 18 years old, I grew up with a very, in a very conservative home. And I walked in and I put my hands on my hips when I was 18 years old and I said to my grandmother, I'm an adult. Now, you're not gonna tell me what I'm gonna do anymore. But now, if my grandmother were here, I'd probably hang my head and say, well, actually, my brain's not grown until I'm 25. So we know if we can keep people off of tobacco products until they're 25, chances are very slim that they're even going to pick that up. In fact, we know well over 95% of smokers start before they're 18. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. prevention is really key. Yeah, I remember in high school seeing uh, the kids outside smoking. Yeah. And, you know, I think that way back, I mean, I, I think people equate, you know, James Dean with the rolled up cigarettes and stuff, and it was always yep. the tough kids, and it, you know, it was always the kids that got in a lot of trouble. This isn't the case. Marble this man. is affecting everyone. It's affecting uh, athletes. It's, it's affecting, you know, top students everywhere. And I encourage people to do a couple things before I run out of time. Number one is if you, are, you think that your youth is vaping, have a conversation with a pediatrician, definitely, mm -hmm. um, because they're working very hard to help kids who are addicted. Uh, and so I, I think that's very, very important. And the other thing is talk early and talk often. Young kids see so much more than we saw. Um, and the world is just an open book to them. So I think we need to talk early, we need to talk often, we need to grab those chances for conversation. And we need to remember that this, these products are cheap, sweet, and easy to get. And that's what attracts kids to them. Amen. Well, uh, I've definitely got a brain full of info tonight. And it looks like Roger has, too. I can see information dripping out of his ears. Oh, absolutely. Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Either that or brain cells. That could be more, it's more like than that. So more we like have a minute and a half left. Actually, less than a minute and a half, about a minute and a quarter. So uh, I would like to thank you very much for coming, Joyce. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, really well, Charlie. we'll have to have it's you back again. <laughs> We're going the wrong way here. There we go. We'll have to have you back again some other time, uh, maybe next year. And um, hopefully, well, I'm sure you'll have tons more information. Absolutely. And, and we can look at what's happening in the community. And hopefully uh, that'll be an improvement on what's happening now. Oh, finally, you can see Phil. Yes. Here's Phil. Yes. Phil, come over Be here and say hello. Hi, Phil. Oh, Ooh, you're sweet. <laughs> <laughs> and people can reach me at Berkshire Area Health Education Center if they have any questions. Mm -hmm. um, it's either jbrewer at berkshireahec.org or they can call 842-5160. Um, that is the ugliest bird I've ever seen. Aw, poor Phil. Yeah, well, you're not so nice looking yourself. Oh, I know that, but. Uh... <laughs> All right, well, thank you, Roger, for coming. Pleasure, as always. And again, thank you to Joyce, and thank yes. you for coming. We will see you early in December. Have a wonderful Yay. night.